What he represents is patriarchy. We're here to do work as men, as patriarchs. There's nothing more natural than being a father. Welcome to day three in the 21 convention 2020 here in Orlando, Florida, Patriarchs edition. To kick today off, we have a speaker who I don't even know if really needs an introduction. This man is a media mogul through YouTube videos, in-person camps being led, leading men, leading families, inspiring, lighting fires, spreading the good word of what it is to be a man and how to take pride in that. Your next speaker is going to be Elliot Hulse. Elliot Hulse is a father, a husband, and a man. A man who inspires men, a man who helps men be good at being men. And today, he's going to help you become a better patriarch and set yourself up for success. So let's give it up for Elliot Hulse. Thanks, bro. <clears throat> Patriarchy is the future. Did you get your patriarch hat yet? Everybody get their patriarch hat yet? Future is patriarchy. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah. Do you agree? Yeah. Who agrees that the future is patriarchy? Wow, we've got a smart room here. What does that mean? Leadership. Leadership. What else? What does it mean that the future is patriarchy? If the future is patriarchy, where are we now? What's the present? Chaos. 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 That's very good. Does patriarchy represent chaos? What does patriarchy represent? Order. Order. So if we're in a time of chaos, we believe that the future is patriarchy, we're living in a matriarchy. matriarchy. But nobody says that. You, nobody wants to admit that. Nobody will say anything except anti-patriarchy. So you know that you're living in a time of, patri of matriarchy because we live in a time of anti-patriarchy. What is patriarchy, what is the root of patriarchy? Root word of patriarchy. Patriarch, right, what? Father. Pater. Patriarchy and patriotism. Pater also is the root word for pattern. What's a pattern? Something that's sort of secular, something that you can kind of count on. It's kind of always going to be that way. So we got the fact that we're living in a matriarchy, moving to a patriarchy, there's a pattern, it's predictable, and it's about the father. Now, this whole event's about the father. You guys are fathers. You might want to be fathers. We're talking about patriarchy and fatherhood. Pater. Paternity tests. It's about the only thing you hear about pater, to, pater these days. But we got to dive into both. If we're sitting in here, and by the way, you guys are ahead of the curve. We are so ahead of the curve right now that people can't even stomach that term patriarchy. You hear, they hear the word, word patriarchy and they cringe. There's a whole lot of bad feelings about it. Not just against, not just women, men. Because I'm gonna show you in a moment, we're living in a time of diabolical disorientation and men are effeminate, more effeminate than we've probably ever been in our entire culture. If you have an aversion to the word patriarchy and you're a man, you're actually a woman with a penis. You're not a man because you don't respect authority. You don't recognize the pattern. You're not stepping in to what's true. You ain't gonna be ready for what's the future. You're gonna crumble, disintegrate in this degenerate culture through chaotic matriarchy. Now, I don't wanna make any judgments about good or bad because a pattern is just a pattern. Matriarchy, patriarchy. Chaos, order. And it's exactly what it is. I'm going to talk to you more about how clear it is that matriarchy is chaos. Effeminacy is chaos. Femininity, as beautiful as it is, 
as attractive as it is, it's chaos. Women are chaos. That's why we have events like this. Women don't have events about how to understand men. Because for the most part, we're in order. We're usually very predictable. Unless we're effeminate. We got the minds of our mother, like Jesse would say. And we are emotional and we're acting like women, and then you can't figure them out. But when a man's being a man, he's very clear. It's very obvious, very cut and dry. Women, chaos. So the good news is that although we're living in a time of chaos, which is very evident, there's a future. Let's step into the present for just a moment before I talk more about that future. Will Durant says that a nation is born stoic, strong, and dies epicurean. Anybody know what that means? Stoicism is kind of trending right now because there's a movement. Patriarchy is coming. There's a sense that something's going to change. It's very obvious. You might not see it, but you can feel it. And the fact that Stoicism's on the rise in a way means that it's coming. But Epicurean. There's no question about it. I don't think I need to go into the details of it. I did it in my first talk, but we know that men are suffering. Men are losing right now. Suicide rates, drug addiction, uh, prison, regardless of what the TV say, because if you ever want to know the truth, do the opposite or believe the opposite of what the media says. Women make more than men. Women have more degrees than men. So it's, it's topsy-turvy right now. We live in, like I say, diabolical disorientation. Up is down, down is up. What's good is bad. You ever notice that? When you speak up about what's right, you're wrong. And what's wrong is right. But you can't say nothing about that because there's been a big, a giant, massive, ideological subversion that has us all ridiculously brainwashed. I got so much I want to say. I'm going to get to that in a moment, but let's stick right here. Epicurean. Anybody know why they call it Epicurean? What's Epicurean? Who's Epicurious? What's Epicurious's philosophy all about? Nobody knows, right? But you heard the quote. Pleasure. 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 Anybody know the definition of effeminacy? The addiction to pleasure. Effeminacy is different than sloth because sloth is more an aversion to what's hard. I don't want to do it. It's too difficult. It's too hard. It's too challenging, too austere, too tough. I ain't going to do it. That's bad enough to be slothful. That's sinful enough to be a sloth. But to be effeminate, is not just an aversion to what's hard, but an attachment, an addiction, a holding on to. Pleasure. In the time of chaos, when things are topsy-turvy, when effeminacy reigns because we live in a matriarchy, men are effeminate. There's four kinds of effeminacy according to St. Thomas Aquinas. First form of effeminacy is sensual effeminacy, addiction to food. Obesity is off the hook. I think I said in my last talk something like 66% of men are obese or overweight. In contrast to women, it's only about 54%, but everybody's fat as fuck. <laughs> Sensual effeminacy is associated with Good feelings through drugs, food, video games, sleeping in, jerking off, watching porn, all that. Addiction to sex. Need that sucky, sucky, mommy, mommy, licky, licky, pussy, pussy. So addicted that women reign. The only reason why women are, look, this is a pattern. And my whole point of the talk here is about the pattern. But the pattern does us, and we do the pattern also. It's doing us, and we're doing it. So we've got to take responsibility for it, 
but at the same time it's happening. One of the things that we're doing, or we're allowed to happen, is for women to rule over us with what? Their most, in, their one true value. A woman is valuable for what she is. A man is valuable for what he can do. You can't let that rule, but we have. So sensual effeminacy, emotional effeminacy. What is that? You know what they're teaching kids in school right now? You know what they're teaching our boys in school right now? Two plus two equals four only if you feel like it. How does that make you feel? All about feelings. I think we've been fucked by feelings because they keep telling us to be vulnerable and it's a lie. They want us to be more like women. Being vulnerable is not masculine. It's em emasculating, effeminate. Oh, I feel moody, stuck in a mood, depressed. Men ain't supposed to be fucking depressed. You could feel shit, but you can't sink into a mood. You can't let it be stuck to you. It's a damn shame to see a depressed man because that means he let himself become inflated and deflated. He's attached to the high and he crumbles with the low because a part of emotional effeminacy is not just depression, but it's also the elation that precedes the depression. Before every depression, there is an inflation. Check yourself out. Check yourself out before you go uh, on a date and how giddy you are and excited you are and you're thinking about what's gonna happen before it even fucking happens. Think about when you see a girl before you even talk to her, you already married her. Think about coming to an event like this. Before you even get to the event, you already know what's gonna happen. Guess what, you're fucking inflated because when you get here, somebody's gonna pop your bubble. Now depressed. Attachment to feelings, effeminacy. Then you have intellectual effeminacy. Boy, this is a tricky one because we're told that the world needs your knowledge. You need more worldly knowledge. Information, ideas, books, videos, addiction, guys. Watching all those videos don't get you nowhere but mind fucked. It's mental masturbation. More videos, more books, more reading, more idea. Why? For pride. That's all it does. Most of the information don't go nowhere, but in your eyes, right back out. Bang. And then you got volitional. Volitional means that you choose your will over the will of God. Your will over what's right. We've become our own gods. That's effeminate because men look up always. Men receive their authority from above. And if you turn your authority in to you, Acting like a woman. You're rebelling. And we live in a time, it's interesting, if you read Revelations, which is, which, is a, which is a foreshadowing of the next turn, because the entire Bible is just this cycle of Stoicism, Epicureanism. God save them, they do the right thing, then they screw up and lose. God save them, do the right thing, screw up and lose. God save them, screw up. The whole thing, it just keeps doing this. So Revelations is just, is just sort of a, a depiction of what that looks like when that shit is about to happen. And there's an amazing uh, imagery, the book is full of imagery, of what it looks like when we reach these times of diabolical disorientation and it's a drunk woman Riding a tiger. Think about that. A drunk woman, rebellious woman, riding the tiger. Female rebellion. Rebellion. So when you act rebellious, you think you're being strong, you think you're being tough. Being rebellious is a complete woman being drunk, riding a tiger. Authority. So anyway, my point here is that we are at that Epicurean effeminate, chaotic, matriarchal, dark, dying time right before the sunrise. And that's the way it happens. And it always does. And interestingly enough, 
an amazing book named The Archetype of Initiation by Robert Moore. Archetype, pattern, initiation. Initiation is merely the movement into another life, the movement into another way, the movement into the next step of things. It's happening in our individual lives. There's an initiation happening quite often. And in men's lives in particular, there's very marked moments of initiation going from one world into another world. There's also global initiation. Countries go through initiations. But there's one aspect of initiation that's cross-cultural. It happens at the micro level and it happens at the macro level. It happens to the individual man and it happens to the entire country, the entire culture, the entire freaking planet. And it's described this way in the archetype of initiation. The movement away from the world of the mother and atonement to the world of the father. There's a movement from the mother's house to the father's house. There's a movement from the realm of mommy to daddy, from matter to pattern, from materialism, the matrix, sensation, effeminacy, to pattern, spirits, stoic, righteous, strong, father pattern. So this movement away from, just think about everything I said with regard to effeminacy. Feelings, neediness, addictions, moodiness, emotions, darkness, chaos to order. You see this archetype of initiation happening naturally, in a number of ways for the individual. Check this out. Psychologists know, scientists know that when a baby's born, whether male or female, it doesn't know the difference between itself and its mother. Have you ever heard this? Anybody ever heard this before? The baby don't know because the baby doesn't have an ego yet. The ego has to be developed. The ego has to be grown. And there's something powerful about the ego. I'm not against the ego. But when you don't have an ego, you merge. There's a merger between the psyche, which is developing in the baby, and the mother. The baby thinks he is mommy. Whenever the needs need to be met, mommy re is reaching there. When things feel fucked up and weird, mommy's right there. For nine months, I've been growing inside of mommy, listening to a heartbeat. I am one flesh with mommy. I come out of mommy from where daddy put me in. We'll get to daddy in a moment. The baby believes that they're one with mommy. This is interesting, this is really fascinating, especially as it regards to, as regard to men. Something happens when the baby is around one or two years old. The baby starts to recognize, oh, I'm this and mommy's that. That's the first, what's called love object relation loss. It's sort, of a, it's sort of a triumph, but there's also a loss because the baby has to have a complete revolution in self, sense of self. That's when the e first ego starts to grow. Wow, you mean I'm not you? Titties, pussy, warmth, snuggling, kissing, food? I'm not all that good, gushy, good feeling stuff. That's a little scary, but I'm, but I'm me. That's a fascinating initiation, happens for boys or girls. But then a little while later, just a few years later, they say around the Oedipal age, Oedipal complex, Freud called it, four, four years old. Another very tragic split happens, not for the girl, but only for the boy. Boys go through numerous cycles of initiation. This is your first cycle of initiation. And what is it? Just remember, every time I use that word initiation, I talk about this pattern, it's a movement away from mommy to daddy, the world of the mother to the world of the father. This tick tock or this cycle keeps happening. Check it out, it's amazing. It's an amazing pattern to recognize in your life in the world. The little boy 
all of a sudden recognizes, wait a second. Not only was it hard enough to figure out that you're not me and I'm not you, but we're not even of the same order because I have a penis. That's a shock. That's called a second shock of love object loss relation. When the baby begins, now this doesn't happen to girls. Girls, see they say that girls just are, boys become, because we go through these, we go through very, many more various shocks and, and, and stages of loneliness and stages of exile than women do. And it begins right then and there. The girl, she, I have three daughters. They know themselves because they never had that chop, that separation, meaning that second awakening that I'm a different gender, I'm a different sex. There's something different and required of me than my mother. And it's kind of not fair. But check this out. A beautiful thing happens when order is in the home. The boy recognizes that, whoa, I'm not mommy, but, oh, daddy. This is very important. This is critical. If this doesn't happen, this is why we got little boys walking around in dresses. The diabolical disorientation is to such a degree that we got little boys that because they can't do this and look to a father, they wear princess dresses. My friend I was having dinner with last night told me that in his daughter's school, there's a little boy with two mommies. Oh, progress. Oh, feminism. The little boy goes to school with a fucking dress. That's immoral. It's chaotic. It's wrong. But you can't say right and wrong in this day. You know why? Chaos reigns. Well, I'm calling it out like it is. Because patriarchy is the future. So there's that, there's that movement away from the world of the mother to the world of the father. But the father has to be there. Like I said earlier and in my last talk, we are living in a time of what Yuri Benzminov, anybody know who that is? The KGB defector who understood and was schooled in and perpetuated the Marxist agenda of Russia, who lost its patriotism when it sunk into Marxism and communism, which is the absolute opposite of father, patriotism, nationalism. The errors of Russia spread. When Russia fell, not only did Russia fall, but it exported its mindfuck in the form of cultural Marxism. I talked about the school of the Frankfurt School and uh, uh, George Lucas and uh, Gramsci. These guys who decided that the revolution wasn't going to happen with bombs and bullets. It had to be a cultural revolution. Just give me a little history as to how we got where we are right now, particularly in frickin' America where little girls are walking around, where little boys are walking around with dresses, and we're not allowed to say anything about it. It's been a complete and deliberate destroying of our morals. And he calls it, Yuri Benzinov, calls it demoralization. When he defected, he came to America and he started explaining to us, do you know what's going on to you guys? Let me explain it to you. And he used the, the term ideological subversion, which the first step is demoralization. What is demoralization? Is destroy all sense of dignity, all sense of righteousness, all things that are good and true in a culture and totally pervert it. How? What Gramsci called the long march to the institutions get into the schools, get into the churches, get into the government, get into the media, and screw all that shit up. Look where we are. Look at the schools, look at the churches, look at the media, look at the freaking media. And they don't have to argue because their, their points are chaotic, right? Matriarchy is where we are. Their, their points are, create, are totally chaotic. So if you know something about a secular what they would call themselves progressive, leftist, Marxist. They don't argue with facts. They argue or they use brain, they use psychological warfare. So for example, the point that I made yesterday, and I'm getting to, I got a lot of points, so I'm getting to what I'm talking about here right today, because I got a lot of hope. Got a lot of hope for what's going on, and I want to set you up for it. 
not going to argue the point that transgenderism is a good idea. Because you can't. You can't. But you can fool people by letting Bruce Jenner cut his dick off and putting him on the cover of a magazine and saying, woman of the year! Can't argue with that, because then you're a sexist. You're a racist. You hate. Yeah, I hate what's evil. But you can't say that. And that's part of the brainwashing. And what he said in that video was that the, is that the brainwashing was greater than they ever thought it would be because the, it has taken on such an effect that not just the media and the music and the, the, you know, the schools and stuff, but Americans do it to Americans. We do it to ourselves. They call it political correctness. Totally satanic. Straight out of hell. Every bit of it is straight off of Satan's ass. He shit right on us. He's got his minions, his puppets. So, and they ruin our world. Chaos. So in the little boy's life, he moves from unconscious to conscious. Mommy to daddy. And then there comes a point when the little boy has a, a second awakening. Usually around the age of 12, 13, 14, he gets man juice. Man juice makes a man a fucking man. One of the things that's sad in this day is that testosterone levels are dropping precipitously. Just dropping. There's some, I got some theories about why that is. We're doing it, but it's doing it to us too. All these plastic bottles, all the junk food, the shit in the air, maybe the Wi-Fi, wireless waves going through our fucking brains. All kinds of stuff, literally physically turning us into women. But man juice is what makes a man a man, and when a boy gets that man juice, there becomes a second shock. It's a different kind of shock, though, because this enlivens him. It almost gives him a, a jolt. I'm a strength coach. One of the things I do is I work with young men and help them become stronger. I don't take them until they're about 14, because that's when they get that shot of juice and whoop, they straighten the fuck up, and all of a sudden now they can build up some muscles. They start walking with a little bit of a swagger. That's what man juice does. That's why the world is so anti-man juice. It's okay to give estrogen to little girls so that they can have sex out of wedlock, but don't ever talk about giving men more man juice. Keep them away from that. Just think about that. At that point, the fathers, the elders, the men, the uncles, the grandfathers, if they're there, step back in, and this time, they yank the boy out of the mommy addiction. Because up until that point, he's still in his mommy's care. Anything that happens, run to mommy. Mommy's still giving me cuddles. Mommy's still giving me ice cream. Mommy's still fluffing my pillow. Mommy's still powdering my booty. Mommy, 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 mommy. But when that man juice comes up, all of a sudden that boy and his mother, the relationship changes. And if the father doesn't step in, there will be either and this happens because nobody, nobody, nobody wants to make women aware. Part of the reason why we are where we are right now is because the world has kept men and women unconscious. And women are totally, what we hear about is toxic masculinity, but women are totally unconscious of toxic femininity, the dark mother side that will turn that little boy into a substitute husband, or will he will react by <clears throat> hating her. It'll be one or the other. He'll either become a mama's boy, a baby boy, a beta boy, a blue pill boy, or he'll become a tyrant. So the fathers step in because they recognize that this next phase requires daddy again, but daddy in a stronger way. Every time the father reintroduced to himself to our lives, every time we're reintroduced to the father, the father becomes a bit more complex a bit closer to the father. And sometimes the father got to slap you. And so what are the things that we, they would do? And this is just uh, anthropological proof, stories, studies. They would come in. Very interesting. Here's an example. All the men would dress up in something scary, right? Tough looking, maybe mass. Bust into the hut. Little boy screams, ah! You gotta understand that the mother is in, is, is in cahoots with the men. 
Because back then, women were conscious of their dark side, and they recognized that a boy needed to be pulled away from him. From her. But he's starting to act up. He's starting to feel his oats. He's starting to want to fuck. He's starting to want to fight. So daddy's bust in. They grab him. He screams, Mama! Help me! Mama's like, save my boy! Get away from my boy! She's playing along. And they, they pull him on out, and they take him where? Into the wilderness, into the jungle, to the top of a mountain, off a fucking cliff somewhere, something. And they break him down. The word's called humility. You know the word humility comes from? Humus. Why? Are we called human? Because we come from that dust. Breaks you right the fuck back down. This is what the father does. This is what daddies do. This is what's required, but you get sued today or called a, a child beater or whatever. But that child needs to feel some sort of pain. That boy in particular needs to feel some sort of pain. He needs to be broken down a little bit. He needs to be humbled. Broken down so that he could be built back up and instilled with the values, with the stories, with the meaning, with the purpose, with the agenda to go back into that society. If that doesn't happen, he stays a little boy. It's not happening. We're all little boys who are killing ourselves and taking drugs. But this is the way it's supposed to happen. This is the way it will happen when the future comes back. Patriarchy. The only reason why I'm thinking about this stuff, reading about this stuff, is because it's the sign of the times. It's a zeitgeist. We couldn't have had these conversations 10 years from now. But the patriarchy is the future, and the patriarchy is coming, so we've got to recognize what it's all about. And daddies are going to be that much more important. They're going to come in and take over and smack the shit out of their little boys once again, break them down so they can what? Every injury, every wound creates an opening. Right? Right? The wound. The wound. Every wound creates an opening. And why? So that he can be receptive. So the boy can receive the indo indoctrination, the story, what's right and what's wrong. What's expected of you and not expected of you. What should you stay away from and what should you do? R good and evil, all these things. They're then instilled into the boy so that he has some sense of meaning for this new man juice. If he doesn't get it, he turns into a pervert. Spends his days jerking off, playing video games, seeking sex from little girls, or he turns it on himself. Suicide, gangs. Most of us can't do this for boys because nobody did it for us, but it's coming back. So what happens on a natural level with a child even, it don't end there. How many of you guys are middle-aged? Ha! <laughs> Some sort of fucking awakening happens around 38. 38, 39, 40, something happens, it's another initiation. In this world that mocks us, they call it midlife crisis. The fact is, what's happening to us once again? By 38, we become so addicted to the matrix, the material world, the mommy world money, family, clothes, homes, doing stuff. And something happens at that point around middle age where we go, just like the little boy, remember, I'm not mommy? They go, I'm not the matrix. Mommy matrix, I love how those words work together. Mother, matter, matrix, material, father, pattern, paternity. Patriarchy. So anyway, at about 38, the, th the same thing happens again. 38, you go, I'm not my mommy. All the things that I've been addicted to, all the things I've been chasing, all the things that make me feel good, all the things that I've invested in, all the things that I think is me, it's not true, and we break down once again. If elders were still available when you're 38, you still have more men. The men will come back into your life, except instead of them dragging you out of your mommy's home, you get kicked out of the matrix and the older men are there like, I knew you'd be coming. Come on in. Right? Isn't, that, isn't that what the older guys here do when they talk? They talk to you younger guys? I know, I know. Come on over. Right? This is what happens at that junction. My point here is that it never stops happening. Men are constantly dying and being reborn. And it's always this movement away from the mom 
the world of the mother, not, well, at first it's our original mother, that's our real mother, our earthly mother. But after, after time, it becomes more figurative. And the same thing with the father, because at this point, the father becomes more figurative. Because at a lot of points, our, our earthly fathers are dead, or we've atoned with our fathers to such a degree that we can see him for his sin, sinfulness. We can see him for his, his fallenness, and it doesn't bother us anymore. And we can see through our father to the father. And this is when men start becoming religious. Our world in its disorientation through communism, atheism, and feminism has taken the father, our fathers out of the home, feminism, and the father out of our lives. That's why we're killing ourselves. We have no fathers when there's no father. Atheism is a bad idea. Not trying to prove God or prove it ain't a God. There's good ideas and there's bad ideas. Atheism ain't working. People who believe in God don't kill themselves. So we got it happening on a natural level with the individual man. But check this out. There's also, well, I didn't even start going there, but the supernatural level. The supernatural level is when you start waking up around middle age and start recognizing that you've been duped, you've been tricked, you've been attached. There's too much going on that you're addicted to. This world is dust. And you start to really recognize that at a certain point. The mama world is chaos. The world of the mother is chaos. The material world is chaos. You ain't going to make ups, ups and downs of this thing, especially now. And listen, you guys are blessed. You're, you're born to be here at this time. This is the most diabolically disoriented time on the planet in generations. It's the peak of it. Because, you know, we were talking about the 80-year cycles, but they didn't have Tinder in the last 80-year cycle. They didn't have cultural Marxism telling little boys they can cut off their dicks, take hormones, and wear dresses 80 years ago. This is, we're at the pinnacle. We're at the peak. There's micro cycles and macro cycles. I'm at the conviction that we are at the end of a huge macro cycle. So what happens naturally? Supernaturally. We're starting to see through, and I think we're all waking up. I think the culture is waking up to the lies that we've, it's evident. We're waking up to the lies that we've been told. By mere virtue of Donald Trump being elected president, you're beginning to see it happen at the national level as well. We went from Obama mama, Mama Obama. He represented the peak of mommyhood. His name even sounded like fucking mama. Gonna come and get your free phone, baby. <laughs> to Trump. Right? So you, you're starting to see it happen in the zeitgeist. You're starting to see the pattern happen throughout. You're starting to see it in ourselves and individually, but you start to see it like almost like it's God's plan. Almost like it's a pattern, an archetype, like it's meant to be this way. So don't fight. There's no reason. There's no reason to push away from it. There's no reason to fight it. We just got to go with the flow. And if you go with the flow, there's some things you got to know. That all your addiction, all your effeminacy, all the chasing tail is what got us in this mess. It's doing us, it's doing it to us, and we're doing it to ourselves. I said that before, and I'll say it again. And it's been happening since the beginning. This is why the stories in the Bible are so denigrated. That's why we're pushed away from it, because it's telling us what's going on. There's too much red pill knowledge in that book, and that's why we've been turned away from it. I get it, because I've been anti-Christ too. I know because I grew up in this anti-Christ world with the anti-Christ spirit, and I've been anti-Christ, anti-father, a rebel, a rebel. But I'm waking up, and I'm reckless. I took the red pill. Red pill brought me back to the Bible. It's the strangest fucking thing. I was like, okay, wow, all these things are so true about intersexual dynamics, but <gasps> it was like that from the beginning. If you look at the story of Adam and Eve, what happened? Where did the sneak bring his little slittery self? To the female. 
How does cultural Marxism make its way in? Through the female. Yes, progress, women get to vote, but it got us to where we are. Not making any judgments, but it's how we got where we are. Because only women will vote for cutting your boy's dick off so they can have a kick a mom out, kick the dad out of home and have a girlfriend. And then get a little boy and corrupt him. And men who allow that to happen are effeminate men because their mama corrupted them too. Jesse spoke all about this. If you want to hear more about this, listen to Jesse Lee Peterson talk about it. Because he loves to talk about how mamas destroy their boys. That's how we got where we are. In the beginning, when Adam recognized the sin in Eve, he didn't turn away. He said, give me some of that. He was addicted to her. He didn't remember that that's my helper. Instead, he followed him. She, he followed her. That's why it's so funny when God comes to uh, Adam, he says, because you listen to your wife. And then he, and then he lays out his punishment. Because he, you listen to your wife. That was, that was exact, that was his first offense coming out of God's mouth. Because you listen to your wife. What do we got right now? Happy wife, happy life. There's a diabolical disorientation. No, no, no. We got the fucking mess we're in because you're listening to your wives. The natural order has been turned upside down. So my point there is to show you that this is a perpetual pattern. This always happens. This just keeps happening over and over and over again. And we're here, here, here at this point. And what do we do? What do we make of it? What do we think about this? How do we prepare? So since COVID, I've become a prepper. Anybody else here become a prepper since COVID? <laughs> right? I was, a, I was a little bit of a prepper before that because I'm paranoid. <laughs> but I upped my prepper game big time. And I'm telling you, you got to do it. Don't let the media tell you that you're a hoarder because they want to control you. Because that's ultimately what the dark mother wants is control. And the government, the oligarchy, the, the deep state, shadow government, cabal, whatever the fuck you want to call them, Illuminati, they want control because they're influenced by the dark mother. Satan's their daddy. And their main thing is to fucking control you. Men establish order by protecting and providing. Start prepping. Because shit's just going to, look, don't be fooled. It ain't going to stay this way all the time. It's not going to, things are easy right now, but it's going to crumble. It's going to collapse. It's going to fall apart. And you're going to be stuck with your hand on your dick. Start prepping. Mommy ain't going to take care of you no more. Stephen Arnold said in his book, Hard Times Create Strong Men, that when everything is good, we want mommy in charge. I see it with my own kids in my own home. When things are good, mommy. I want mommy. Mommy in charge. As soon as shit hits the fan, as soon as there's a chaos, as soon as there's a problem, as soon as there's some hard shit, daddy! Where's daddy? Everybody wants daddy to fix it. But if daddy's still looking at mommy, you got your hand on your dick. Right? What does that mean? Effeminacy. Central effeminacy. Jerking off. Stop jerking off. Number one, start prepping, preparing food. Stop jerking off. That's, that's on there too. That's a bonus. <laughs> right? Stop jerking off. You should have, and I'm going to be a little practical here with you and give you a little bit of advice from what I've learned. You should have no less than three months worth of food in your house. Anybody who's studying what's going on will recognize that there is a food shortage coming. And it's not, it's going to be controlled and created by the diabolical bad guys. But it's also nature, God, the sun. We're going through a grand solar minimum. I don't know if you guys know what that means. Climate change is real. What they're telling us about climate change is wrong, but it's a fact. And they, it is predicted as a pattern well known that there's going to be a lot of changes on the planet to fuck up our agriculture. It's already happening. And a part of it is it's happening. Like I always say, I keep saying this. It's happening to us, but we're doing it to ourselves. Anybody notice all these explosions that are going off in like food silos, grain silos, sugar silos, all the fires in the, you know, that burnt up, all the, and all the crops in the Midwest that are all fucked up? It's coming. You need to have at least three months worth of food, more if you can. Water. You should be saving water. I know that sounds crazy, but believe me, guys, mommy ain't always going to be there. 
There's chaos being sown, and if somebody wants to destroy us, they already destroyed us from our minds. And we're trying to wake up your minds. But the next is wiping you out personally. You're going to be wiped out. There is a plan on this, in this planet by the globalists, if you will, to depopulate the planet by 90%. Anybody ever hear the Georgia Guidestones? Check it out. Anybody hear of Agenda 21? Check it out. You could call it conspiracy theories, but it's conspiracy fact. Conspiracy is a true thing. Conspiracy just means someone's conspiring. Who the fuck isn't conspiring? There's a conspiracy. And it's fact. Just look it up. And they want us dead. And we're going to go. You know why? We're killing ourselves. Why? Because they have us believing that overpopulation. Overpopulation is a fucking myth. They just don't want you here no more because they look at you and believe you are useful fucking idiots. They got what they wanted from you out of the old economy, a new economy is coming, and they will have a whole new global plan. And they don't need y'all. They don't believe in God. So they don't believe that you're the image of God, and they believe you're fucking worthless. That's why they're teaching us in our schools about evolution and shit, that you ain't nothing but a fucking meat suit with a dick. You got a soul. There's a reason why you're here. Start saving food, saving water, learn how to purify water. Firearms! We live in America. There's a good fucking reason. You, if you can get firearms, and you should have done it a while ago, but now, do it if you can. If you're an American man, and you have an aversion to firearms, you're a fucking pussy. You're useless. Because a man that can't protect himself is not a man at all. Learn how to use firearms. Don't just get a gun. Go and get training. There's something that they used to teach us in schools before all this effeminacy. Do you know that? In the 1950s, high school kids learned how to use rifles in school. But once the Marxists got a hold of our schools, they got rid of that shit because they're like, we, we can't have these people protecting themselves. How do you make them not want to protect themselves? Teach them that guns are bad. A man that can't protect himself and protect his family is no man at all. Learn how to protect yourself. Returning to the father, because that's what this is all about. The future is patriarchy. Returning to the father means retraditionalization. There's a great book by Steve Turley called The Return to Christendom. Whether you like it or not, believe it or not, want to reject it or not, the fact is that the greatest country on earth, America, is built on Greek, Roman, and Christian ideals. We get our political structure from Greek and Roman. We get our moral structure from Christianity. A movement towards the Father is a movement towards God, God the Father. It's a good idea because God the Father has some great plans for us, one of which is make more babies. They want to wipe us out. They want to wipe us out, but it ain't, ain't going to happen because you know what? S secularism is wiping themselves out because they're all gay and they all think the planet's going to destroy itself if they make too many babies. So they're going to be outnumbered. Leftists don't make babies. They don't replace themselves. Tanner, how many kids do you want to have? Seven! That's freaking crazy. And look at this beautiful woman who's willing to bear. Find yourself the right woman. But you know what? You know what, what Tanner has going on? A man of God. How do you get your woman to have seven babies? Have an authority. Get in line. You get in line. Everybody wants their women to get in line? No, you get in line. Because your women won't respect you anyway. Your women will not respect you and follow you if you have no authority. If your authority is in yourself, your woman has no reason to follow you, trust you, and then make seven babies. You got to reestablish the authority in your house, in yourself, and in your home. God is a good idea. I'm not here to argue if it's right or wrong, true or false. I have my opinion. But it's a good idea. Retraditionalization is unfolding. It's happening make more babies that we could see heaven on earth. Because when the mama world crumbles and the patriarchy returns, it's either going to be you, your children, your 
legacy, li lineage, generosity, generativity, generations, or it's going to be the evil one. It's your choice. But guess what? It's going to happen with you or without you because it's a cycle. It's a pattern. It's paternity, and it's coming from the Father. And one thing for sure, the future's patriarchy. Done. All right, does anyone have any questions for Elliot? Let's go. If you got questions, line up so we can get it. Thanks a lot for, thanks a lot for uh, your talks today and, and uh, a couple of days ago. I really enjoyed them because you've essentially told my story. I grew up a heavily feminized male with a diabolical m uh, mother from the 60s, turned me into her son husband, took me a 20 year process to reclaim my masculinity, 20 years of work, male initiation, and I was re uh, recently baptized Christian as well. Uh, so that you're essentially, and now I'm prepping, of course, also. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yep. You got your gun? Pray, pray, yeah. Well, I, I managed to get a handgun, and the guy trying to build me an AR can't get parts. So, yep. Uh, Stick with it. Yeah, exactly. Still working. Um, so I'm wondering if you could say more. You, you use terms diabolical, Satanism, hell. You've used these terms, and these terms are in our, are in our culture just kind of broadly. And Kevin Spacey, of all people, and the usual suspects said the greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing the world he doesn't exist. Right. I'm wondering if you can say more about the devil. And because my personal feeling is men really got to get on board with the fact that there is a devil. Devil, the evil is real, personified, centralized, and it is a real thing. And it's not just imaginary. I wonder right. if you can help, help do that because I think men need to recognize that. Right. Well, look, man, all you got to do, you, it doesn't have to be so mystical, mystical because... We have an aversion, because we have an addiction to the material world and the matrix, we need quote unquote proofs. And I understand that because I grew up in the same fucked up schools as you guys are. So if somebody talks about something that I can't see, which is a pattern, you gotta recognize that God is a pattern. That's why he's called the father. What is a pattern? A pattern isn't a thing. A pattern is the blueprint for the fucking thing. So if you're trying to get, see God, you might want to look in the matter. Because guess what? The pattern always manifests in the matter. And if you want to see God, check out the matter right now because it's being exposed. You want to know about Satanism? You want to know about the rulers of this world that are diehard Satanists and Luciferians? Let me ask you this. Why would they be holding, and they do. I mean, look up Bohemian Grove. Look at what, look into the, you know, this video is probably going to get censored, but look into the rulers of this dark world, these literal people. I'm not going to say names, but the central bank owners who owns the central banks. You really want to dig deep, start looking at the Democratic Party. I'm not saying that both parties aren't evil, but one is just showing their cards real strong right now. Look into the pedophile rings. Look into drinking baby's blood and baby sacrifice. Listen, all these abortions that have happened, over 60 billion, million abortions since 1973, is pure baby sacrifice to Moloch. It's us giving our babies to the devil. They've been doing it since the beginning, but now the cards are very, are very clear. So my point here to you is to answer you by saying, do a little research into how Hollywood is teaching us Satanism. They're doing it and it's all obvious now. It's not a matter of speculation. It's a matter of do you accept it or you don't. And here's the thing. If they're doing it, if the media is doing it, they're showing it to us, they're giving it to us. If the rulers of the world, the governments, the banks, they're doing it and they're talking about it. And it's all very, if you look at it and you, and you study it and you understand where it comes from, what they're doing, it's pure demon devil worship. They're Luciferians. What's this that they're drinking the baby blood for? What is it? Uh, adrenochrome. adrenochrome. Look this shit up. I talk about, it, talk about conspiracies, but these are conspiracy facts. They're doing this stuff. Now, it's funny because they'll do all that shit and it's in broad daylight right now. It's in broad daylight right now. But you still don't think that there's a 
God and a spiritual battle going on? You're in love with watching, consuming all their demonic media, but at the same time, there's no God? They got you right where they fucking want you. Worshiping Satan. Our entire culture, we are all worshiping Satan. We just don't know it because it's been hidden until now. If you ain't blue, if you ain't red pill by this point, you gotta, you, you don't have much longer. So that's, that's it. I say just look into the world. You got it, brother. You know, you were talking about how the way to get ahead is to have more kids, right? We focus on combating the evils that we're seeing rising up. And the only way to create your legacy and your lineage, which I'm ahead of Tanner on this, I've got nine. I've got nine. Eight of them. <laughs> Now, God bless you, Father. Now, eight of them are future patriarchs. Got one girl. But would you agree, now kind of on what Socrates was talking about yesterday with the rabbit's defense was to outbreed the competition, outbreed the enemy's ability to eat them, right? Would you agree on the fact that even in times where we're struggling, all right, there's so, so many different forces pushing on us and there's so many different angles that we're being attacked from, it might not feel safe because you have that argument of who would want to bring a child into the world like this, right? Who would want to bring an innocent child into a world that's fucked up and full of chaos? People with faith. Right. And to me, it doesn't matter what that faith is as long as that faith is a promising faith towards the future. Right. Right? So what would you say? to those, because I want to hear it from you, what would you say to those who are struggling right now with that thought of who would bring another kid into this fucked up situation we're in right now? Because as a father of nine kids, I'm constantly fucking terrified of what the oh, hell is yeah. going to go on, right? But I know it's my job as their father to lead their mother and lead them on the path where they need to go. So what right. would you tell the people right now who are sitting there to themselves who are going to watch this later? and wonder, why the fuck should I even bother? Because it's going to get nasty out there. And they don't feel like they're prepared for it. People with faith. You have to have faith. Otherwise, here's a part of what's happened with liberal sec secularism. They rip faith from you and make you feel like the world is bad. The world is, is not worth living for. That's why people are killing themselves. Um, but there's, a, there's always the opposite side. There's always the other side. Only because our schools, our media, our culture shoves this shit down our throat, that we are a virus on the planet, and that uh, our, because we're breathing and farting, that the world is going to blow up, all that kind of garbage. There's the antithesis. There's the other side of that. God says, be fruitful and multiply. I made plenty for you. There's, the work, God is not limited in his ability to consistently provide for us. Not only provide for us, but he wants us to thrive. He wants us to be the best we could possibly be, and he gives us a law on how to do that. This is why religion is a, is a good idea. So if you're asking me what kind of people will be the ones that can move forward in a world where we're plentiful, it's those that have faith that the future is great. Changing it to an abundance have that mindset. Hmm? Changing it to an abundancy mindset. Abundance mindset. Abundance mindset. Thank you. Appreciate it, brother. You got it, bro. God bless you, man. Nine kids. I have four, and man. Yeah. What's hey, up, man? So uh, I loved how you talked about the various stages of initiation for raising a boy and yeah. those kind of epiphany moments where realize where he was in life and how it's for men to do the work of breaking him down and building him back up. But you being a parent of, of daughters, I want to know, is there a similar form of initiation or what, what to do as a, as a male patriarch, the father of a girl, to build her up as a, as a godly woman and a woman who is going to be the right type of wife for a future patriarch? Man, it's not easy in this world where they tell women it's bad to be wives. The main thing that has to happen, in my experience, in my judgment, is that they 
need to see a mommy and daddy get together and do the right thing. I tell my daughters, look, you want to know how to, how to be righteous, do the right thing? Look at your mother. They have a mother that's worth emulating. And of course, as a father, I'm the pattern. How is your mother behaved towards me? How am I with your mother? I think more than anything is showing that example, but that's not good enough. Showing the example is one thing, but creating boundaries is another. And I got to tell you, you got to tell them no. You got to tell them no, that's wrong, that's not right. Because women, have, women are more congenial. Women, want, women will receive any fucking thing in a lot of ways, especially these ideas that seem good. That's why when Satan went to, to uh, Eve, the first thing she thought when she saw that apple, even though it was forbidden, was, it's so nice. It's so pretty. It's a rainbow. Rain who could be angry at rainbows? Who could be angry at apples? It it's so pleasing to the eye. Oh, and it so tastes so good. The thing is that even though all the garbage that they're shoving down our children's throats is seemingly good, it's just like that apple is rotten to the core. And I got to remind them sometimes, and they don't want to hear it because the TV, because my friends, because the media, because the music. And I look like the bad guy, but here's the thing, you got to be willing to be the bad guy. You got to be willing to say, look, I get it that everybody's doing that, but it's wrong. They're going to do what they want to do regardless. I can't make anybody do anything, even your own children, because they'll go behind your back, but they know where you stand. They have to know where you stand. So those are my two answers. It's about boundaries and then cultivation. Every garden has a wall. If you're going to cultivate anything inside a garden, you got to have walls. Walls are good ideas. Put up walls around your children. One thing I wish I would have done better was keep the screens out of my home. I didn't have a TV. I thought I was winning, and then I bought them screens. I didn't know where that was going to go, but that's a fucking rabbit hole. You got little kids? Keep the screens out of their hands as long as you possibly can and put boundaries on those screens because in this world, that's where Satan is coming in. Not, it used to come through the TV. Of course, it comes through the school and the culture, but now it comes in a handheld device that you got with you all day long. And they're going to be attracted to TikTok, shaking their booties and WAP, all that kind of bullshit. And you got to tell them. My daughter was, she was watching a WAP video the other day or, or the making of WAP on YouTube. My, water, my wife and I walked in to say goodnight. And Colleen goes to, says to her, what are you watching? That's trash. And I stood there and said, I said, I, you know, I know you're watching what you want to watch, but you got to understand that your mother and I are telling you that that's garbage. That's not good stuff. She, she wanted to have a fit. She didn't like that we were telling us that. She was telling her that. She had a reaction to it, but that's fine. You can have a reaction to it as long as you know where I draw the line. You see what I'm saying? So you got to protect, but then be the example. See your mother. That's why I know, look, if you, if you're, family breaks up, your children are fucked. Girls that don't have a mom and dad that's together are more promiscuous. They end up having babies out of wedlock. They're out there getting tattoos and using heroin and all kinds of bullshit. When a mommy and daddy stay together and a mommy is a good example of what kind of woman you want your daughters to be and you're treating your wife the way that you want a man to treat your daughter, I think that's where you begin. Absolutely. Thank you. You got it, bro. All right, let's give it up for Elliot. What he represents is patriarchy. We're here to do work as men, as patriarchs. There's nothing more natural than being a father.